Hello and welcome back. Today I'll be going over a simple solution to lead code problem 29, which is hated by nearly 75% of people who did this problem, and you're about to see why it's so annoying. Let's start by looking at the problem description. We have to divide two numbers, which sounds quite simple, but the catch is that we aren't allowed to divide them using the built-in division, multiplication, or modulus operators. To deal with this problem, let's think about how we want to solve this. When you divide two numbers, for example 10 and 2, we get 5 as the answer, but what does the 5 mean? It means that you can fit 2 inside of 10 5 times. If we did 11 and 2, 2 can still only fit inside of 11 perfectly 5 times, leaving a remainder of 1. Luckily for this problem, we can ignore the remainder, and we just simply have to round our numbers down. So the way I want to solve this problem is by continuously subtracting the divisor from the dividend, until the dividend is smaller than the divisor. This way we can find out the amount of times that our divisor can fit inside of the dividend by counting the amount of times that we subtract it. We can do this with a simple while loop, which subtracts divisor from dividend until dividend is smaller than divisor, along with increasing a variable of your choice by 1 each time. That would be easy enough if it weren't for this next limitation. We have to check if the quotient of our numbers is between the integer limit range, and we have to return either the lower or upper integer limit depending on what part our quotient breaks through. The reason this is an issue is because the upper limit is 2 to the 31st minus 1, while our lower limit is negative 2 to the 31st. This means that if we made the lower limit positive, it would cause an integer overflow error and make this project fail. So before we can add our simple division through subtraction method, we have to do some small tests at the start. First, we're going to be using a simple division principle. When we divide a number by itself, we get 1 which is what we're going to be implementing here. If the divisor is the same as the dividend, we will be returning 1. Now, we know that we're rounding our numbers down, and if our numerator, or the dividend, is smaller than the divisor, the denominator, then we're going to be having a number less than 1, in which we're going to be returning 0. For example, if we had the dividend as 1 and the divisor as 2, that would be 1 over 2, which is 0 0.5, which rounds down to 0. Here at the start we're going to be running a simple return statement that happens whenever the divisor is the lower integer limit. Since the lower integer limit is the biggest number there is here, it makes sense to add this small simple check. After that, we're going to be getting into test cases involving 1 as our divisor. First up, if 1 is the divisor, we know that anything divided by 1 is going to be itself, so we can just return the dividend. Next, if our divisor is negative 1, we can return the negated version of the quotient, since anything divided by negative 1 will have its sign flipped. Keep in mind, I'm not multiplying by negative 1, which breaks the rules. I'm directly negating the value. Now, we have to be a bit careful here. Remember how I said the lower integer limit is 1 more than the upper positive limit? If our dividend ended up being the lower limit, then we would get an integer overflow error. We should return the upper limit if a quotient would break the upper limit. So that's what we're going to be doing here. The next test cases we're going to be going over involve when our dividend is the lower integer limit. The reason we're going to be doing this is because our subtraction method is going to involve making the dividend and divisor positive through getting the absolute value. And if we have a positive lower limit, we know what's going to happen. The way we handle this test case is if we first increase the dividend by 1 so that the lower limit can handle becoming positive, and then we add back the 1 later again after the sign has been flipped. This makes sure that we're not actually changing the value of the number, we're just changing the signs. We can use an if statement with a boolean to make sure that we're only adding the 1 back once. So after we add the 1 back, we can make this boolean false so it doesn't activate again. After we do that, we can simply do our simple division strategy. Now keep in mind, we have to make sure we account for two situations. One when the divisor is positive and one when it's negative. What I just explained previously is when the divisor is positive. But when the divisor is negative, then we have to adjust our strategy slightly. When the divisor is positive, our result would be negative, so we should negate the quotient that we are returning. When the divisor is negative in this case, we make both the divisor and dividend positive through taking the absolute value, and then we continue with our simple subtraction division strategy. Now that's all the basic test cases that we had to cover. If none of our divisors or dividends match any of the test cases, we can continue with the basic steps of division. But first, we have to check something. We know that dividing two positives and two negatives yields a positive. However, one negative and one positive results in a negative result. We need to be able to find out when we should be making our quotient negative, and to do this we can use another boolean variable which I'll be calling sign. 
What we'll be doing with this variable is assigning it a value of true whenever the divisor or dividend is negative, but we cannot assign it when both the divisor and dividend are negative. If we did, then we might return a negative quotient when it should be a positive quotient. To ensure that we don't do this, we should add the basic OR operator, but we should also add a separate statement that says that both should not be negative. Now that we've done this, we can come down here to our subtraction part. When we return the quotient, we just add an if statement that checks if the variable sign is true, and if it is, it will return a negative quotient. Otherwise, we just return quotient as positive. And if we submit this program, we can see that it works. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, goodbye.